Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to change your self image, how to maintain that self image, and how to not revert back to the old self image. Now realize that it's even kind of reluctant for me to say that because it's not so much about attaining a new level of who we are, it's more about simply letting go of what doesn't serve us and letting go of the inauthentic parts of ourselves, of who we think we need to be to make other people happy. Understanding how we can express ourselves 100%. That's more about the idea of our ideal self image and it's about understanding that who we are being in the moment and what we are experiencing in life is a reflection of who we are being. So the power in this is that when we change our self image, that's when then everything has the potential to change because change happens from within. Our life, what we experience is a reflection of who we are. Changing who we are changes what we experience. So then it comes to a point to where we understand how do we change our self image. And I have some videos that go a little bit more in detail to this, but it involves changing the self beliefs about who we are and how we relate to the world. So many times we'll find that we'll have certain experiences that we can call reference experiences, that we have memories in our mind of who we are that shaped the way that we view ourselves. So for example, you may have had an experience when you were six years old of you saying something and speaking out and maybe a teacher or somebody told you to shut up or told you to be quiet. Then you started to revert inwards and maybe now you view yourself as a shy person knowing or not knowing that maybe that experience is what perpetuated that self image of yourself and that's why you are experiencing that type of reality. Now understand that when you start to look at the most prominent memories in your mind of what you believe to be true, of who you think you are, certain memories will pop out more than others. The idea behind this is to look at those memories and see where it started, to see that, oh, this is what happened. Not to necessarily resist it and think it shouldn't be there. Allow the memory to be there, but simply recognize that that is not who you are anymore. It could be uh, a feeling of not being worthy, for example, in my case. Treated a certain way between the ages of like seven to 15 in my life, and because there was a certain level of experience there, it made me think that I wasn't necessarily worthy. And from that, I had to later on, as in when I was like, you know, 20 years old, look at that and reframe what that meant. Instead of it being unworthy or thinking that I somehow deserved it, I then reframed it in a positive way and I could see that those negative experiences of how I grew up actually propelled me to having a deeper understanding of who I am, of actually getting me to a point of having more awareness in my life and really finding my purpose and knowing how to turn negative into positive. So I reframed it and when I reframed the situation, it no longer had a negative impact in my life. So you can use that example in any way in your life. If you were treated a certain way when you were young, you can reframe it and see how it led you to this point now of redefining your yourself. You could look at certain times that you were shut down by friends or family. Maybe that made you go inwards. You don't have to be an introvert your whole life. Understand that the moment you become aware of this, you can then choose who you prefer to be and you can choose to let go of what doesn't serve you anymore. That's why I say this is more about letting go than tapering on. But as you let go of the introvert and you focus on being more expressive with who you are, you focus on what feels good to you and how you can do that and take out those filters, you then start to change your self image. Now from this point going forward, we can then see there will be a habitual feeling of reverting back to the old self image, especially because the way that other people, including family or friends, relate to us is based upon the self image of who we are. So they're expecting us to act in a certain way and when we change that, they're gonna be like, what the hell is going on? They're not gonna understand it. I know that I went through a big inner change when I started to meditate, and when I went into and saw family members and friends, they're like, what the hell, you are so different. I went from needing Adderall for ADHD to all of a sudden not taking it and feeling really good and focused and more grounded, and all of a sudden, everything changed, and it was like they 
almost had an expectation for me to be who I was, but I had to remain grounded in who I am and authentic to it, and then things really began to change. So understand that there also is gonna be a pull for you to be who you used to be based upon the friend circles you have, based upon the uh, way your family talks to you. So this is about understanding and having the awareness and the decision of who you are. You have to make a decision that you are no longer going to relate to the old self image. And as you make that decision, then that point going forward is becoming aware of when you're remaining authentic to it and when you're drifting back. Now, let me give you an example for this. The power of this whole video, first off, is understanding that we must continuously be that which we prefer to be. We must let go of those negative beliefs that are holding us back, the reference experiences with the process that I gave you and I have in other videos. And as we then begin to identify ourselves new in the present moment, it's about then having the repetition and the decision to do it. And as we simply decide and we don't let it there be variable for that to switch, we then begin to actually become it more and more. This isn't about thinking, this is about being. And as we become that, we do that, we condition ourselves in the new way. Now, let me give you an example for how we cannot let ourselves fall back. Now, for example, there was a part of my self image and you can frame this any way that you think, but I used to bite on my nails a lot and I would find myself, especially when I would edit videos or I was doing anything where it was easy, easy for me to go on autopilot, I would start to bite my fingers or bite my, uh, my nails. What I realized though, is if I just set in certain habits, I would then catch myself and then realize in that moment that that's not who I am anymore, then it would naturally stop. But the moment and when I am unconscious of it, that's when it becomes something that just continues to perpetuate itself. It becomes automatic. Realize that our definitions are creating the kind of experiences that we have. We can tag on this new level of understanding what a habit is. On the old definition, and this is something I believe I got from Daryl Inca. This is the idea of understanding a habit. What we think of as a habit normally is something that just continues to run us. It's something that's on autopilot. Now, what if instead of thinking of it like that, we thought of it as it is something that we do that we don't know we're doing. The moment we become aware that that's what we're doing, it though then is no longer a habit. It then becomes a choice. So what this means is that with the awareness, we then become aware that it is a choice if I continue to put my fingers into my mouth to bite on them because I am then aware that that's what I'm doing. That's where the awareness is. So I set certain triggers for me to become aware of that. An example, put lotion on my hands. If I put lotion on my hands and I go to bite my fingers, I'll immediately taste the lotion and remember that's not who I prefer to be and then I'll let it go. If I do bite my fingers, I am choosing to and I'm then aware of the fact that I'm not making the decision to be who I prefer to be. So this is about setting triggers for yourself that make you more aware of who you prefer to be. Understanding that with repetition, that's the key to changing your self image. Now I say this in a lot of my videos, but condition yourself right when you're going to bed at night. Begin to imagine the perfect version of yourself. Begin to feel the emotions of living your passion, of doing what you want to do, of being the best version of yourself, of the body language that you have, of how other people would respond to you. As you visualize that before you go to bed at night, you begin to literally condition that into your mind. When you're going to bed at night, the last 20 minutes, you're going from a beta to an alpha to a theta to a delta state. Your mind is deepening and going into the deeper levels of brainwave activity. The way that we influence our subconscious mind, which is where all self images and our beliefs is through the medium of feeling. If we feel and condition ourselves to be who we prefer to be, that's when we begin to make it easier for us to recreate that throughout our day. A lot of times the way we go to bed is the way we wake up. So when we wake up in that state, it becomes more likely that it becomes just a part of who we are. So realize that you can condition the feeling into yourself. You can set triggers for you that make you aware of what you're doing. And as long as you are aware of what you're doing, you're not on the autopilot mind. You can then choose who you prefer to be and you can then choose to become the most authentic version of yourself. So with that being said, 
I hope this video helps you understand how to maintain your self-image by letting go of what doesn't serve you, about being, conditioning yourself for that perfect version of yourself and setting triggers so that you don't fall back into that autopilot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to like it if you liked it. Share it if you found it of value. And as always, I will see you guys on the next vid. Peace, much love, namaste. All right, bye.